Hi everyone, happy Monday. Um, I am checking in from my living room instead of my dining room. We have um, Remy in the background making guest appearance. Now we got J jealous that JJ got to be um, on camera. Oh. Hi bud, you wanna say hi? He has no idea what's going on. Um, so before school was canceled, um, my class was working on learning about lots of amazing women for Women's History Month. And this was a book that I had been saving to read to them, but had not gotten a chance to um, before school was out, and so I'm going to read it today. So this is called Shark Lady. This is the true story of how Eugenie Clark became the ocean's most fearless scientist. Hope you enjoy. It was Saturday, and Eugenie wanted to stay at the aquarium forever. She wanted to smell the damp, salty air and stare at the glittery rainbow of fish. She wanted to keep watching her favorite animals, the sharks. Eugenie pretended she was walking on the bottom of the sea. What would it be like to swim with her sharks? To breathe underwater with gills of her own? More than anything, she wanted to find out. When the summer came, Eugenie's mother took her to swim at the beach in Atlantic City. Stuffing sticky gum into her ears to keep the water out, Eugenie dove down, down, down. The salt stung her eyes, but she didn't want to miss a single fish. Constellations of sea stars speckled the peb peb blah blah blah, pebbled sand. She imagined a silvery fin standing strong on her back slicing through the ocean current. So she stuck gum in her ears because she didn't have any earplugs. To others, sharks were ugly and scary, but Eugenie knew they were beautiful. As she glided through the cold water, she wished everyone could see sharks through her eyes. But the sharks were only in her mind, for now. Eugenie decided to learn everything she could about them. So she dove. This time into books. Whale sharks, nurse sharks, tiger sharks, lemon sharks. She, Eugenie wanted to know about them all. She also joined the Queens County Aquarium Society as its youngest member. Eugenie's notebooks filled with sharks. They swam in her daydreams and on the margins of her pages. At home, Eugenie's mother surprised her with an aquarium of her own. A 15 gallon tank was much too small for sharks, but Eugenie saved her allowance to buy guppies, clownfish, and coral red snails. It felt as big as an ocean in her room. Their small apartment became an aquarium, a laboratory, and a sanctuary. As she grew older, many were still telling Eugenie what to do. Forget those sharks. Be a secretary. Be a housewife. Eugenie wanted to study zoology, but some of her professors thought women weren't smart enough to be scientists or brave enough to explore the oceans, and they said sharks were mindless monsters. Eugenie knew better. Her dream was as big as a whale shark. So again, Eugenie dove. She plunged into every course she could. Her laboratory became her home. From sunrise to sunset, she studied how fish grow, how they behave, and how they were put together, both inside and out. 
Despite all the people who didn't believe in her, Eugenie was becoming one of the smartest students in her field. Even after she earned her degree, many still doubted her. But Eugenie's work was just beginning. Eager to make discoveries of her own, Eugenie finally dove into the open ocean. In the Red Sea, Eugenie collected hundreds of fish, including three new species that had not been discovered before. The uh, Red Sea Sand Diver, the Barred Xenia Pipefish, and the Volcano Triple Fin. On a research mission exploring the Palau Islands, Eugenie was diving alone when she encountered her first ever wild shark. She wasn't afraid. Instead, she thought it was beautiful. In Isla Mueres, I don't speak Spanish. Someone who does speak Spanish, help me with that. She dispelled the myth that sharks must keep moving to stay alive when she swam through dark caves, still and silent, full of resting sharks. Eugenie's daring heart grew bolder with each dive. Soon, they began calling her Shark Lady. Eugenie had proven she was smart enough to be a scientist and brave enough to explore the oceans. As her courage grew, she began to love and understand her beloved sharks more and more. But she never forgot, many still believed that sharks were mindless killers. Because of their scary reputation, humans were hunting sharks all over the world. Eugenie knew that sharks weren't stupid or mean. She was determined to prove everyone wrong. Eugenie fished through her mind and devised a brilliant experiment. Could she train a shark the way a person trains a dog? Were sharks much smarter than anyone knew? They were. Eugenie was the first scientist in the world to train sharks and even learned they could remember their training for at least two months after. Now we got two of our friends. You can kind of see Remy here and then JJ. Sharks were not mindless killers. Sharks were beautiful. Sharks were smart. They deserved to be studied, protected, and loved. And Eugenie's dream was now a dream come true. The end. So something that I love about this book is that um, it really talks about what a lot of women have gone through and continue to go through as far as women's rights. And um, it always makes me think of the quote, nevertheless, she persisted. So even when people were telling her just to be a secretary or a housewife, she knew that even though those were great things for women to be, she wanted to be so much more and she wanted to be a scientist, which at the time was considered kind of a man's profession. So I think that um, Eugenie Clark is definitely someone we can all look up to. And she has helped teach us so much about sharks. So if you are a fan of sharks, you have Eugenie to thank for that. All right, guys, that is the end of our story. I will be back with some more stories tomorrow and this whole week. Remy and JJ are exhausted from their long morning of eating and wrestling. So um, I'm going to go, but I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.